going to do differently. <laughs> uh, and we are going to be going back to Cuba in November, so um, just keep that in we'll mind. We'll tell you more about that later. But before we go any further, may I just say a little bit about my fabulous husband, Lee Varis? <laughs> We, his his uh, nickname is the Sultan of Skins. Since he wrote the best-selling photo book called Skin. The, would you oh, tell God. us the, the full the, name? The, it's the so long. The guide to <laughs> lighting, photographing, and retouching faces and bodies. And he is a, a master of all things Adobe. And a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife, Bobby Lane, is uh, known as the Mistress of Light. Uh, she's been teaching lighting and portrait photography for a long time. For a long time. Uh, and uh, she's just wonderful with people. We will see most of the people shots here that we're going to be showing you are, are from her. Uh, she just has a, a wonderful way with, uh, with portraiture. And we like to say that we do people, places, and things. So we kind of cover everything. And we also sometimes call it people, people places, places, and, and post. post. Because whenever we do a photo tour, uh, there's a there's a, a a component of it that's instruction post processing. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's get started. We started off here in in Havana. This is the view from our hotel. We stayed at the Havana Libre, which used to be a, a Hilton back in the day. Until the revolution, and they took it over. Uh, anyway, Havana is a beautiful city. Um, I'll we'll give you another overview here. You can kind of see it, uh, the, the bay here. The city kind of surrounds it. And uh, it's quite lush. Uh, um, there's all kinds of things about uh, Cuba, the people, the color. You know, is everybody, everybody wants to know about the color. Everybody wants to know. And so, you know, this is the typical portrait. They're in the very touristy area. They have all of these women dressed up in, with flowers and colors and smoking cigars. And it's about the only place that you will ever see people asking for money. I mean, this is actually how they make a living, is they're there so that you can photograph them or be photographed with them. But other than that, nobody gets paid. Everybody is, like, open and friendly and wonderful. I mean, the, the Cuban people were amazing. So we wanted to start you off with her. But the other thing that Cuba is really known for <laughs> are the cars. The old American cars. And it is really true. The, these these cars from the 50s are everywhere. Um, and varying degrees of decay. Yes. <laughs> and we'll, we'll show you more about we'll that. We'll see lots of these cars. <clears throat> um, it's also a place of architecture, uh, Spanish colonial architecture. This one is actually the Capitol building and kind of reminiscent of a uh, Hours. A certain building in the U.S. Um, there's also kind of Revolutionary War uh, memorials and posters everywhere. Uh, you see a lot of pictures of Che Guevara and a lot of quotes. You know, "Viva la Revolution!" all over the place. Uh, this was in the one of the plazas that. Uh, well, it's started, Revolution Plaza. Yeah, yeah, this is dedicated to the revolution, and um, I made it into a square for Instagram. That's. Uh, Nighttime shot of the uh, of earlier Spanish colonial architecture. You see a bit of this uh, everywhere. Really and, beautiful architecture everywhere. Um, and uh, here's another nighttime shot. Uh, you see this a little more elaborate kind of Baroque style uh, stuff happening in as well. So plenty of architecture in Havana uh, and. Uh, plenty of, of street life. The, what we were fascinated with was mostly the old part of Havana. Uh, this is where you know the people live and they're they're just out in the streets. We'll see a lot of pictures of this. Uh, this is uh, old Havana was my favorite area of, of all of Havana because this is this is the real this is the reality. This is where the people have been living the same for a long, long time. You can see the paint is peeling. There has been bright colors you know, they're two and three story buildings, they're very th skinny, so there's not a lot of room. So people really live in the street. Everything is happening in the street. So you'll see this, we'll talk about this more as we go on, but you'll see this. This is a, a great shot, you know, you've got the old car and then just people hanging out. So there's, there's so much to see and to do in Cuba and so much to uh, photograph. As um. And this is kind of, this is what our uh, <laughs> the participants of our tour. This is what they look like most of the time. We could barely get the cameras out of their faces. Everybody was just having such a great time, uh, and there's so many picture opportunities. Right. Every time you turn around, there's something else. It's really it's just fun. Um, people are very very open, and it's easy. It's easy and safe. And we'll again we'll tell you more as we go on. 
Okay, so on the street, uh, people do everything on the street, including work on their cars, of course. There's no garages. And uh, this pretty much is year-round. There's so many people on the street at all times um, because it's fairly temperate, even in the winter. It's not very cold. Uh, so this is pretty standard. Nobody worries about their cars being stolen or anything <laughs> like that. When, well, obviously this one can't because it's missing a wheel. Um, one thing that I wanted to say is, is that you'll see as we're going along is, is think about different viewpoints. When you're going out to photograph, we always have a tendency to shoot at our own eye level, but lots of times you're going to find stuff that's more interesting if you either get low or high, uh, and it, it presents a different kind of viewpoint. So, you know, as evidenced by this shot here, but I love what's going on in the background too. You've got the, uh, uh, the pedicab back there, and, and, you know, people are dressed in bright colors. Everything has got colors everywhere. Uh, including the cars. Oh, of course. Uh, this gentleman is actually retrieving uh, tools which he carries in his trunk so that he can work on his car. And here's, here's a shot of his car. Uh, <laughs> these, these cars are all, it's like they're painted with a brush. <laughs> Bondoed. You know, uh, <laughs> they're not like super glossy finished type of things. A lot of these cars are held together literally with chewing gum and bailing wire. <laughs> um, it's, it's pretty amazing. But they are everywhere. Yeah. And if they're halfway decent, as you can see by this one in the front, then it will they will turn it into a taxi. But they are very much a part of the culture. And almost, you know, life sort of happens in and around these cars everywhere. Uh, and everywhere you look, there's kind of an interesting shot to be had. Uh, uh, they do love their, their bright colors. So you'll find areas where the where the taxis are, they're just all lined up, and of course people are going crazy. What I love about this shot is, like, look at these guys, and you can just see this woman who's leaving the edge of the frame here, and they're all whistling at her. <laughs> but, you know, this is, this is not uncommon, is to see all of these cars lined up uh, to be rented as taxis. They'll, they'll take you out for an hour or two hours, or you can hire them for the day, or, you know, however you want. So there's several areas that they gather in, and this is one of them. More, uh, more cars are all over the place. So I think this like, is in Trinidad, I think, uh, yeah. This one is in Trinidad. This, now we'll come back to Havana. This is, this is an old classic car. This is actually a little more rare. You don't usually see cars this old. Yeah, I think uh, this is the only one I remember. Uh, but they, they do love their cars, and they're almost always American cars. So in photographing, like lots of times you, you look at pieces of things instead of looking at the whole thing. What I was intrigued with here was not just the, um, the hood ornament, but the yellow taxi sign, and then there's the little Japanese kitty, and then there's an American flag uh, car deodorizer hanging from there. So it's kind of like it's pulled a little bit of everything in here. But I love the, uh, you know, the strength of that. It looks like it's an airplane about to take off. Yeah, that's another common thing. They will often replace the original hood ornament with something else. Uh, this was obviously a sort of custom replacement here. And you'll see that a lot. <clears throat> and I, I just see that Larry Savinsky asks, can paid or non-paid street portraits be used for competition, stock, etc.? Do you need a signed model release? Well, you know, that's a very good question. If you were using it personally, if you wanted to put it into a competition or if you want to, you know, sometimes the competition will say that you need to have a release. But if you're going to use it for an exhibit or use it for your own self-promotion, you're okay without a release. Um, in, in the United States, the, the way that the law states, you need to have a signed model release if it is a recognizable person and it's used for commercial purposes. Now, commercial purposes means that you're using it to sell either goods or services. So you're using it to sell Coca-Cola or life insurance. Um, if it is editorial, in other words, if, you're, if you were writing an article in a magazine and these pictures were accompanying it, they're information and therefore it is not necessary. So when you ask about stock, almost all stock agencies, what little there are left, uh, they would require um, uh, releases and, um, and again, competitions sometimes they will also require it. So you'll have to, to tell. <clears throat> so um, I see another question coming up, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something about this. This is another one of the areas um, where people were renting out the taxis. And I just want to let you know that everybody was so open, friendly, happy. They would always ask where you're from, and we'd say U.S., and they were so happy, and they'd say, Obama, and they'd give the thumbs up. Of course, you know, that's changed a little bit now. <laughs> and then we'd say, we're from Boston, 
and they'd say, oh, Big Poppy, because, you know, they are big baseball fans there. So, um, so it was great. Everybody was really wonderful. So, And uh, uh, let's go to this one and answer the next question, which is, uh, can you tell us about your editing? Did you do much boosting of the colors? Um, and I, I would say some, but uh, kind of depending on the shot, I mean, in this particular shot, this is the color of this car. There really isn't very much boosting done in here. Uh, but the other thing is that um, uh, Bobby and I are both kind of mirrorless photography nuts. We've switched over. Yeah, we're in the Fuji cult. Um, we're Fuji. We're Fuji X photographers or X team photographers. And so when we're looking at the photo, we are looking in, uh, you know, the way the sensor is set up to capture the image. So if I'm shooting in black and white, I'm looking at the image in black and white. Uh, if I'm shooting in color, because I'm using the Fuji system, I'll generally select one of the film simulation modes, and one of them may be Velvia, which seemed to be kind of an obvious choice here. And that already sets up some, some color saturation boosting, and I'm finding with the Fujis that I, I rarely need to do much to the color after <clears throat> After capture. Yeah, the Fuji sensors are, are really fantastic. I mean, we always do a little bit of clarity. We do a little bit of saturation. We do, you know, it's it, but it, it depends on the image, right? And and that I should say, my favorite saying in photography and in teaching photography is that everything depends upon everything, because in some instances, when you're like in some of the streets, the colors are all very muted, so it wouldn't make sense to boost the peeling paint colors to make them saturated, because that's not the way it is. And speaking of peeling paint, you can kind of see here underneath the Mercury uh, logo here, the, the orange peel effect of this paint. Right. The paint jobs here are just hilarious sometimes. They're, they're just uh, so handmade, you know. Um, oh, this was a very fun evening. We just have to tell you about this. We had an opportunity, our, our whole tour, tour group, which was 16? 16, 16. We had 16 people, including spouses. Uh, we had... Uh, arranged to have all these convertibles pick us up and drive us around town at night, and it was just so oh my much god, it was fun. it was like being a teenager again. It, you know, all convertibles, music blasting, everybody was um, laughing and carrying on. Uh, you know, they have the Aruga horns, and it was just absolutely hysterical. We had we had such a blast doing this. So, so we're we're driving <laughs> around town, you know, in these convertibles. And uh, shooting at cars out the window. And well, I wasn't shooting at the uh, here. I was on the ground. <laughs> but, so uh, it, obviously, you know, everybody does panning of the cars, yeah. and you, know, you do the, the panning at night. The key to the panning is you try to find a background that's medium to lighter in tone, and then you just you know you got to follow it along with a shutter speed of around an eighth or a fifteenth of a second. Also, if the the background ideally should be fairly close to the vehicle, like this this car is driving right by this building in the background. And that's what really gives you the, the, the extensive blur. The further away the background is, the less blurry it'll be when right. you're panning. Um, so the ideal thing is to find something with lights. You can kind of see the blue lights here from this building behind the car that are, that are blurred. Uh, and that really gives you, enhances that sense of motion. Um, We've got a couple more shots that were just fun because we had so much fun doing this. Yeah. So here's one of the participants, and he's got the camera up high, and he's got a wide lens on, so he's photographing the people sitting in the front seat and then blurring the, uh, well, he also the scene has a around. Flash he's got a flash on, on this camera. You uh, can see it a little better on the next one. We are now just to mention this. It's another th interesting little tidbit of uh, uh, trivia. These cars. You know, they're old. They really are old, and they have not oh, yeah. been kept up on blocks. So these are not cars that are in mint condition. They're literally held together. They, they leak gasoline fumes. <laughs> and even though we're in a, uh, in a convertible, it reeks of gasoline. I mean, everybody was getting a little bit of high. Yeah, we there's no, cat no catalytic converters yeah, here. Yeah, this stuff is, uh, you know, it's pretty toxic, but uh, we were having so much fun, it didn't really matter. Here's a... Here's another shot. So I'm standing up in the car now with my flash and uh, photographing the car next to us with the slow shutter speed. So flash freezes the uh, subject, but then the, the slow shutter speed blurs the background. But we just thought this was funny that she's, you can see the blur in her image um, on the iPhone there. I see we have another question coming in. About, were many of your photos HDR? I don't think any of them. None. No. Uh, I, I generally don't. I don't. I, I, I tend to avoid it unless it's absolutely necessary, but none of the shots that we're going to show you today had any HDR yeah. at all. 
So you see in the background here, we've got pink. That was, we had a, one of our cars that we'd rented was pink, and I was standing on the other side of the street and trying to find, you know, color behind so that I, as the cars were coming by, I could pan. The next one's a little bit better, which I think is kind of cool, too, because we, you've got the green and the pink contrast here. So the pink that's in the background there is actually this pink convertible, which you'll see here in the next picture. So that's what I was using as my background. So here's our group. Um, and you can see we're all laughing. We just had so much fun. It was, it was just a blast. We had an hour that we uh, rented these cars and drove around. It was, it was just hysterically funny. <laughs> and not everybody has a car. Yeah, you get <laughs> lots, of, lots of pedicabs. Lots of pedicabs. Uh, another question here, what type of lights are, are those on the street? Uh, warm. <laughs> what type, you mean, mean the, like the regular street lights? Yeah, they're going to be they're going to be more like the tungsten lights. You know, who knows exactly that it's yeah, they're I, they're warm. They seemed like they were they were tungsten of some kind. Yeah, we're shooting on daylight because we're using the flash, so that your main light is the flash that's got to be on daylight. So, but I mean, there's everything. There's fluorescent lights, and you know, I'm not. I did I didn't notice anything unusual like gas lamps or anything like that. Yeah, it seemed pretty normal. So uh, one of the th things that, that I did, <laughs> my little personal project, was to follow Bobby around and get pictures of her taking pictures. Uh, and so what we've done for a couple of these here is kind of paired the picture I took of Bobby interacting with her subject and then the resulting picture that, that she, was, uh, she was taking. So here we go. Now this one I, I chose to shoot in black and white. It was kind of a gray car, so there wasn't a lot of color. But I really liked all the smooth tones, and I, I really spent time with him working on the composition to get it just right. Again, he, was, he wasn't the driver. He was waiting. His friend had to go do something, and he was just sitting in the car. So, you know, I started talking to him. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this now, is that I talk to people all over the world, and I don't speak anything but English, and not all that well sometimes. It's <laughs> kind of like my favorite line. But, you know, people respond to a smile. They respond to, you know, to your tone of voice. So I just start talking, and you know, they understand, they don't know exactly what I'm saying, but it's pretty obvious I've got cameras hanging around my neck. Go back to the, the picture before. So, you know, I'm obviously a photographer. <laughs> There's, there isn't a doubt about it. And you see this guy laughing? So one of the things that I do is that I say hi to people, and I ask them to say hi, and then I laugh. I say, ah, ha, 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 and then they start laughing. And it works everywhere. It works anywhere. It's universal in the whole world. So you know, remember that, that people always will respond to a laugh. And it's a, it's a human connection as well. It's like it's, it's something that doesn't go away. So I see here Frank is asking. Uh, what equipment? Uh, what equipment? Okay. okay. Go to the next one. You can actually um, see a little bit there. Well, we, uh, Bobby and I are Fuji uh, X photographers. Now, it doesn't mean we're, we've quit photography, obviously. I always say the X team. We use the X trans sensors of the Fuji cameras, and we're quite, uh, we quite, love the Fuji system, we love their lenses and everything. So we, we have Fuji cameras. Yes, and I, I have, um, my main camera now is the X-T2. I started with the X-T1. Lee's got the uh, X-Pro2. Yeah. He started with the X-Pro1. Um, and we have some of the smaller ones too. I've got the X-T10 and then we have some of the, with the X-100S and you have the X-100F. Yeah. So we have a variety of them and we have also a wide variety of lenses. Lee actually was into Fuji before we even met and before, way before I was. So he already had an X-Pro1, and what were the lenses that you had? I had a 35, 18, and a 60. That was what they right. came out with. So my favorite portrait lens is the 56 1.2, which in this picture here you can see hanging underneath the uh, reflector there. Um, uh, the, the 56 is the equivalent to an 85 millimeter on a full-frame camera. Um, I use that. Uh, there's a medium zoom. It's a 16 to 55, which is the equivalent of a 24 to 85, and that's a fixed 2.8. I also have a 90 f2, which is the equivalent of a 135. Um, plus, you know, we've got the long ones, the equivalent of the 70 to 200 and the, the 10 to 24. You know what? We use everything. And Lee also has a medium. He's got a yeah, medium I'll zoom. I'll tell you, on this, on this particular trip, most of the pictures I took with my X-Pro2 and the 18 to 135 zoom, which is not a fixed focal length, but it's, it's kind not, of like, not a fixed f stop. It never it never came off my camera. So I mean I just I, I had that and I was ready for just about any situation with that uh, range. Um, quite uh, quite a sharp lens as well for surprisingly sharp for such a wide zoom. Yeah I think it's a three five to five six. 
Yeah, it's, you know, you never yeah. know what <laughs> where you're going to so, be. On the, so it's not fast, thing. but it's handy. And I, I use that 16 to 55 f2.8. That kind of lives on my camera when I'm doing street shooting. And then I normally have another camera with either the 56 or the 90. So pretty much I use that. So for this picture, um, we're, we're in the, the park. There's this park that has a statue with John Lennon, which you're going to see in a few minutes. And we just walked around and talked to the people. On our photo tours, you know, we photo a photo tour is different from a photo workshop. Workshop is a, you know, you're having lessons every day and you're shooting every day. The photo tour is a tour. So, but we always do instruction. We will do lighting instruction, both natural light and flash. We will do post processing in instruction. So, it isn't a formal workshop, but you do get that. So, one of the things that I do is talk about working natural light and working with reflectors. So we just walked up to this woman and started talking to her and asked her if we could photograph. I have people, you know, they're, they're learning to see the light, to find the light and put people in it. And then we augment that with the reflectors. So, so this, is, this is a situation that Bobby actually kind of set up with this woman who just happened to be sitting at this, this bench. And I'm going to cough here in a second. <laughs> so we're both, oh, yeah. we both had colds here. We're, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so I just started talking to her and I explained that we were photo tours. She spoke English. Uh, most Cuban people, you know, first off, all Cubans get a full high school education and most of them speak English. Um, not all, but most. So she was, she was actually very flattered that we asked to photograph her and she was very patient with us. So here's the picture. So we've got, a, you know, the natural light was pretty soft, but there's, there's a little more coming from the camera right side. You see that little edge? But if we didn't use that reflector there, the center of her face was going to be kind of dark. So you see we've got a little catch light in her eye there. And I'm, I'm shooting fairly wide open, so you see the background's totally blown out. It's kind of like dead grass back there. So not a lot of green, but, um, but you know, we talked to her and played with her a little bit. And again, I always do the ha-ha-ha thing. And uh, this is the one that I felt was actually the most, the most genuine about her, her, you know, being really comfortable with us and having a good time. Okay, and now we have, uh, this was... John Lennon Park, and it's famous for this statue here. It's a beautiful statue, a beautiful bronze statue. And uh, this is the woman whose job it is to hold on to the John's glasses. So there are little holes in the statue where these glasses can be shoved in. And if they did, if this woman wasn't there, these glasses would be would disappear. Stolen. People would somebody come would take them. them as a souvenir, right? So she's there, she holds on to the glasses, and when somebody wants to get a picture of the statue, she puts the glasses on the statue and uh, kind of is there to supervise it. She's there all day. Uh, lovely woman, very friendly, and uh, so Bobby got a great shot of her here. Now look, we're going to talk about the light a little bit here, yeah. too, because this is kind of filtered sunlight, so it's not, you know, when uh, you know I teach a class called Portraits Unplugged, which is all natural light, and... <clears throat> One of my rules, I have a bunch of rules. The first rule is do not put people in direct sunlight unless it's the first or last hour of the day when the sun is lower in the sky and diffused and softer and warmer. But this was still kind of filtered light, and it was still fairly early, but it wasn't that early. But it's not the most flattering light. So it's a little bit harder. It's great for a statue, but it's not so great for a human. So she's pretty contrasty here. So well, now... Bobby basically refuses. This is a picture of Bobby, <laughs> in, case you, in case you don't know. Uh, she refuses to put herself in bad light. If we go into a restaurant, she will find the seat and the table that puts her in the best light. And here we kind of waited until uh, later. In the, we had a little overcast. We had a little uh, cloud come by. So and, and this is basically under the trees a little bit, so the light has a tendency to come in from the front anyway. Uh, and you can see she's got the very soft, flattering light on her. You're, you're giving me a hard time here. <laughs> okay, we have another question here that's asking, how do I compare the Fuji with the Canon 5D Mark II, or is it day and night? Uh, what are the pros and cons? Well, they're, they're very different cameras. Um, you know, first off, you're mirrorless, so you're, you're yeah. already 40% lighter, smaller, and, uh, uh, well, lighter and smaller. The Fuji sensor is amazing. It's really amazing. It's it's not a standard Bayer pattern. I should probably let Lee talk about that. It, it takes a little bit getting used to working mirrorless as opposed to the DSLR because you're actually seeing what's on the sensor. But I quite I was a Nikon shooter and, and Lee was a Canon shooter so he can do a little better comparison here. Um, I'm perfectly happy never touching the Nikon again. I can't believe I just said that after 40 years <laughs> of shooting with a Nikon. However, um, I've, I've been shooting with Fuji for three years now and I will never go back. 
Um, I absolutely love it. The optics are fantastic. The sensors are fantastic. Uh, it's. I'm going to let Lee give you a little more on the technical part. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to go off on a tangent here. We're talking about you know photography, not equipment. Um, but it is. It's kind of interesting that uh, you know Bobby started off with <clears throat> Nikon. I started off with Canon, and on our tours, uh, we basically everyone falls into one of two camps. You're either shooting with Nikon or you're shooting with Canon. And we both kind of feel now that, that Fuji is a really good third alternative, uh, but it is completely different to shoot with a mirrorless system. And one of the things that I enjoy is uh, being able to set up the camera to have the look uh, of the image that you're going for. So in other words, you can change the uh, uh, capture mode to black and white. You always shoot raw, but what you're seeing in the viewfinder is black and white. It, it changes the way you approach something if you if you know what it's going to look like, you know, what your intention for the image is before you actually ship, click the shutter. So that for me is like the biggest thing. So when you say is it night or day, and it is kind of like, you know. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's day. different, but it's it's certainly, I certainly don't miss carrying all the weight around. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's get back into this. our story here. This is, uh, we, are, we had the uh, the great privilege to, to photograph in this little neighborhood that was decorated, the whole neighborhood was decorated by uh, Jose Rodriguez Fuster, uh, kind of an unusual name, for, he's sort of a folk artist in Cuba and uh, it's over 10 years of work uh, rebuilding and decorating this little fishing town of uh, Habanitas and this is kind of a little outskirts of Havana neighborhood uh, and now uh, this whole neighborhood has been decorated, and there's a big uh, sort of museum of his work. Well, uh, this right is his center. This is the, his place right here. Yeah, this, it sort of turned his house into kind of a, a museum. So this is sort of a tourist attraction, uh, kind of like uh, the Watts Towers in in, in California. But, well, this guy's definitely obsessive compulsive. Yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, you know. but it's great stuff. But it's it's so overwhelming that. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like everywhere you turn, there's something else to photograph in his in his place. You can see Bobby. You see, you've fun. got mermaids and you have people and you have all these different colors and it's it's you know it's kind of like Gaudi, that's which which is what you saw. So and now mm -hmm. this is you know this sort of decoration is really extended into the neighborhood around uh, this place, and uh, you can kind of see here the the revolutionary uh, iconography. You always see. Che or one of the other uh, revolutionary heroes in in depicted in one form or another, yeah, including was, the tile work that uh, Fuster it was great. in this neighborhood. Um, so, so we so we, I got to take this for this part ahead. because so we we were just kind of like wandering around the town and the, you you know all these streets everything is like decorated with all the tile stuff and we saw this glow and we went what's that and we went walking over and here was this guy welding. And he had an overhang, and so the, it was beautiful light. Go, go back for one second, because his friend was standing there, and if it, his friend in the striped shirt, if you look at the, half of his face is lit, he's lit from the glow of the welding. So, but the lighting there was really beautiful. So, um, I, you know, here he's obviously lit by that. And then we did some portraits. Now, this is what we call porch light. So it was underneath of an overhang, so no light comes from the top. So you don't have any shadows under the eyes. All the light comes in. And it's the most beautiful quality of light. So you just can't help but get beautiful skin tones, great light in the eyes. And again, you can see here, I'm, you know, I would love to throw my background way out of focus. So this was the welder and his three friends, and they were very friendly. and very Yeah, totally uh, open to have us come in and, yeah. and, and photograph them. Uh, we had uh, a, a trip to a salsa dance academy and it was a performance group that also gave salsa dance lessons and they put on a whole show for us and gave us yeah they gave us and lessons they gave <laughs> they gave us dance lessons and it was like not exactly lit this is a this is a really kind of tough lighting here that was so terrible light very uh, it cranked the ISO and uh, you know low slow shutter speed just to get anything out of it uh, but it was kind of fascinating um, you know, Bobby went backstage here and caught some of the action of the uh, uh, sort of hip hop dancing moves here. But this is just kind of like in an old building, and and uh, but these people have toured the world, 
This is an. Yeah, this, they this were amazing. This they were was a very amazing. professional level dance group. They were all pretty amazing. Yes. And after the performance, uh, we wandered around and got some portraits and really just you know a little outside people. porch lighting. And here's one of my shots of Bobby. She's setting up a shot here with uh, this young couple. They're both dancers and from the group. And here's the resulting shot. So I just framed the blue around the orange, and then they were they were just they're so beautiful, and she was so sweet, and he was so serious. <laughs> so beautiful, just beautiful quality of light on them. And then we have another shot of one of the one of the major dancers here, and you can see all the like some even Venetian blinds. It's just like slatted windows behind him, so the light's kind of coming and giving him edge light on both sides. But there's a wall behind us that some of the light is bouncing off. So you see that big catch light? That's just a big white wall that's behind us. So he's kind of got the major light as the big white wall and then he's got light on both sides to give the double edge. And uh, so after this we we left and everybody's looking around, where's Bobby? And of course Bobby could not stop taking pictures and she got stuck on this. This is the receptionist <laughs> in the uh, salsa school. And the, the pink and the green and again it's like door lighting and look at her fingernails, it's just great. So the salsa programs go on all over the place. This was in another town. I was just walking by and I looked in the window and the, all these little kids were learning salsa. Uh, we spent uh, a little bit of time one afternoon in the uh, city of Coimar, which was the inspiration for Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea. And this is, uh, this is the only shot we've got here in this presentation. It's a Coimar Fort. Is, uh, we've got some street shots coming up, though. Um, I'm going to take this question, go to the next slide, I'll take this question. The John Lennon statue is in Havana, and you don't have to pay the woman with the Lennon glasses, but I think that we did. I think that we gave her a couple of bucks. The Cuban dollar is pretty equivalent to the American dollar, so you know you didn't have to do any conversion. So now we're in uh, uh, Cienfu yeah, Cienfuegos. Cienfuegos, Cienfuegos yeah. which is a French colonial town, and they have horse-drawn carts, and, and it's, it's a, a beautiful architecture, a beautiful place, but it was raining when we were there. It started to rain, so when we were out walking around. So we, um, we, we, uh, we sort of stumbled upon this, uh, these, these uh, gentlemen that, were, uh, that had a horse-drawn carriage that they were giving rides in, and you could kind of see that we're inside the carriage uh, looking out you the back. You can see that wooden bench there. Uh, and... Uh, you know, this was uh, an opportunity to tour the town and get out of the rain, you know, so. <laughs> so the, the people were, um, this man here that you see, he was actually, he had gone to college for sugar technology and worked in a factory for a year before he was laid off. And you'll see another picture in a minute, the, another young, this is, this is my favorite portrait of him. I, I did a lot of photographs of him. Um, he was a very intelligent man and he's now, you know, helping out driving horse-drawn carriages to tourists because it's the only work he can get. So um, the other people, we had three people in this, and so the guy in the blue in the middle, he teaches elementary school in the morning, and then the other guy actually owns the horse and the carriage. So they're they're all friends. So um, they just took us around and they showed us. It's like you know they were talking to people on the street, and there here's there's here's some schools, and this is where this is, and it was just very so homey and open. It was like they were taking you around their neighborhood. Um, the people were just amazing. So. So. Uh... We're now on our way out of Havana into the countryside. We're going to on a we're on a trip to Trinidad, and uh, not the island, but the, the town, town on the south <laughs> central of Cuba. Um, and we're just sort of traveling through the country, and there's all these farmlands, and you know this I think was a date farm or something. And I I had my infrared converted uh, camera with me, a Fuji XE2. And this was literally taken out the window of the bus as we're driving down, uh, uh, you know. It, it, infrared often has this really ethereal quality because yeah. it makes all the foliage glow with with light because they, they emit a lot of infrared energy. I, l I love this picture. And where were you when you took the shot? I was uh, in, uh, the bus, looking, in the <laughs> looking bus looking out the, out the, the side of the window as this went by. Um. The, and there's another question here about providing prints to the street models. You know, we did not, we have one of those little Fuji instant printers, and we did not bring it with us to Cuba. Um, some people have internet, everybody's got a phone, but the internet is kind of like up and down, I think, in Cuba, and I think it's very limited in terms of being able to send something back to people. So unless you have a little mini printer that you can print out an image immediately, 
it's pretty difficult to be able to give images to the people on the street. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, another stop on our way to Trinidad. This was a, uh, a big uh, uh, sugar plantation area. And there was a tower here that uh, was built uh, by the owner of this plantation way back in the past, and it's sort of now a tourist attraction. So they have an open market set up here, and we're up above, uh, you know, maybe the third or fourth story of this tower, which went up quite high, um, just to, so you can see the open market uh, that they had set up. And here's here's a shot of Bobby did of me. So now you've seen what Bobby looks like. This is what I look like. Uh, and uh, I was able to take, uh, he had pretty good advantage to see and give you a sense of what the countryside is really like. And it is tropical. It is yeah. lush. Beautiful. It is green. Um, and this is somebody's home here next to the, you know, probably a plantation worker. You can kind of see horses and cows up in the upper uh, uh, right corner there. And... Uh, and looking down into somebody's backyard here, this from the tower. This is a place, a house right next to the tower. And you can see the colorful clothing, uh, you know, compared to the lush green, uh, which was everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> this so this guy. is really funny. I, I went up to talk to this guy. It's like I have never seen a saddle on a bull before. So I asked him, could I get any? He went, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, maybe he puts little kids on it, but I just thought it was very, very odd. <laughs> And, uh, but I did run into, I'm a, I'm a birder myself, I'm really into birds, especially uh, birds of prey like eagles and falcons. This is a kestrel, which is a, a small, they used to be called a sparrow hawk. It's a small falcon-like uh, bird, and I had him on my hand, and he just jumped in my head. So this is a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> this is a selfie of me in the kestrel. Yeah, there was a gentleman there who had the, the, this bird, and he was like making it available for people to photograph. Yeah. He asked for money. He was one of the few that did. Yeah. Now uh, we finally arrived at our hotel in Trinidad, and this this was uh, pretty much a major resort uh, area. Of, uh, the hotel was quite large, and probably back in the day would, would have been considered very uh, uh, exclusive. Yeah, like a club med kind of yeah. thing. You know, um, you you don't pay for anything. There's all these restaurants yeah. and bars, and you don't have to pay for, for anything. It's all so free. So this is just sort of looking beaches. out at the country. With the, the hotel was painted this bright color and you can kind of see the palm trees and the, the distant hills and it was quite quite beautiful we had some beautiful sunsets we have to have everybody every travel tour has to have some sunset <laughs> action and we were quite lucky in the the this is off our balcony the, there was an odd I've never seen this happen before but there was a shadow cast from one of the clouds at the horizon that that made this little streak up into the sky it was quite interesting And now we are uh, actually in the town of Trinidad itself. Let's see, we have another We have question a question here. here. No, the Fujis are not full frame. They're APS-C size sensors. Um, we are shooting in both RAW and JPEG, and uh, you are correct. When you have um, an in-camera color, like a film simulation, it does only apply it to the JPEG. But it, for Fuji, the JPEGs are amazing. Um, if you go to YouTube and look up, Lee Varis has his own channel. And there, he has a thing called a uh, Fuji Rethinks Raw, and you can get a whole like a little mini webinar about um, uh, the um, the film simulations in uh, for uh, for Fuji. It's they're really really amazing. Yeah. So the the film simulation also would apply to the way you set up your viewfinder, you know, because you're looking at uh, the the feed off the sensor. It's like a live view of the sensor in a mirrorless camera, and that alters the way you perceive the image that you're photographing. So I set up a film simulation depending on, you know, what my intentions are. And in most of the time I had it on Velvia or Astia, which are kind of very colorful film simulations. And now when you shoot with RAW, you certainly can reprocess the film, to, uh, the image any way you like. Uh, but these film simulations are available inside Adobe Camera RAW. So you can set up the camera, the, the you know the raw file, the way you shot uh, the camera. So Trinidad was a, a, a beautiful architecture and cobblestone streets, um, and again you see all the colors everywhere. So here is the hat shop, and Lee is a hat man, so I stuck him in there. So these next two pictures, um, were, both of us were photographing at the same time, and and uh, these two men were involved in some 
discussion with somebody else. So this is mine. And then I, I shot the picture, the, the guy that was sort of dozing at, at the top step there, woke up to take a puff on a cigar. Um, and it was just very interesting. They were completely comfortable having us wander around and take their pictures. Uh, you know, nobody uh, said anything to us about it. And, uh, they're very friendly, very happy to get their pictures <clears throat> taken. I'm, I'm always looking for, you know, like primary colors. And I, I love this when you have basically one color in the picture and then just something else that's just a little bit um, off from it. Um, but this guy was just great. He was happy to have me take his picture. Um, we climbed up the, uh, there's a, t a tower in one of the churches, and uh, you get really quite a great view from there. And I was looking down and looking at these workers. So I, I love it. It's just like a field of, um, uh, of the uh, adobe roofing um, tiles. And this is another rooftop where these other women were working, working along. So again, this is I said this earlier about the high and the low. You know, get out of your, your normal eye level perspective. Here's There's our, our group, group again shot in Trinidad. Everybody having a good time. See the cobblestone streets. Pretty tough to walk on this. Got to have good shoes for there. You know, we always talk about the light, and for me, this is this is Lee's picture. This is one of my favorite of Lee's ever. It's just it almost looks like a Renaissance painting. The light is just so absolutely gorgeous. And this was I was standing across the street and looking through the window or the doorway into this little cafe. And uh, I had the camera set in Acros, which is uh, Fuji's black and white simulation uh, mode. And, and I just saw, this is the way I saw the shot. And so I just took the picture and it, you know, I didn't even bother to so great. alter the JPEG. I just used it pretty much straight out of camera. Yeah, the person with the silhouette and with her hand sticking out and the other two, just the way the light is on this, that's just great. Okay, so there's another question here just about uh, logistics about Cuba. You cannot use U.S. bank cards in Cuba. You must change your American money to Cuban dollars at the, at the airport or someplace else. It's a good idea to do it at the airport because banks aren't always open and there can be lines and um, uh, the hotels will charge more money. So it's better to just do it in the airport. So at this point, you still cannot use any American cards uh, either debit or or uh, charge. So musicians, <laughs> musicians, yeah, everywhere. This, this is the street. thing: you go to Cuba, and there is a soundtrack. Wherever you walk, there's is a soundtrack that's live musicians. So every other block, there's a group of musicians playing, and you know they're always selling a CD or you know. Uh, so, but they're nonstop all day long playing uh, music. There's evidence of music everywhere. Um, the guys are just wherever you walk. There's a musician. Lots of people have their own CDs too. We bought a lot of uh, yeah. CDs. It's just fantastic music. But it really is kind of like everywhere. So, and they all seem to be playing the uh, uh, <laughs> yeah the same no, soundtrack. No. Go go back for oh. a second. There's another question here about how do I we find the Lightroom Fuji profiles versus uh, using the in-camera film settings. I'll have Lee answer that before uh, I go on to the there's shot. In, it, the uh, Adobe has uh, their versions of the Fuji in-camera uh, film simulations in the camera calibration tab. So if you just go to the calibration tab in Lightroom, you will you should see it in the drop-down menu. Uh, you know, you select underneath where it says standard. You'll see all the Fuji film simulations appear there, um, and you can just uh, select them as but it, needed. But it is Adobe's version of the film simulation, so. Yeah. Okay. Let's <clears throat> let's move on here. Uh, this uh, this shot is a musicians entertaining us in uh, one of the restaurants we stayed at. And it's a combination of two shots blended together in Photoshop. So I thought I'd throw at least one kind of post-processing effect thing uh, into the mix here. So uh, a couple of, sh two shots uh, with slow shutter speed uh, blended in with a um, one that was shot um, for the, to stop the action. And uh, a little trick effect here in Photoshop. Again, back to the infrared. It was great for taking pictures of clouds. <clears throat> and uh, we did, uh, have a little side trip to this uh, island called Cayo Blanco, which is kind of a snorkeling and scuba diving uh, stop. Uh, just a just a little island that's yeah. got like one building on it, and they make you paella for lunch, and then we, you know, you hang out and swim for a while, and then you get back in the catamaran and go back. 
Here's the but, infrared of the, that same scene. Um, yeah, and I'll let Bobby talk about this. Cause Cause this is really pretty weird. So we, maybe we should have done the order a little bit differently. But there's uh, on the island behind the, the kitchen, this little kitchen building, it's just like a dump. And they just throw this stuff out there. And it's, it was so bizarre because all this stuff was like dead out there. But there was hermit crabs everywhere everywhere there was thousands, thousands, and thousands of, them. of them thousands and so in that little dump area back there if you walk over there you hear this crunching sound and it's the sound of the crabs eating the garbage it was so bizarre it was like a science fiction film we also had a, a, an iguana that was posing for us at this little stop we so just... <laughs> yeah i have the i have the camera on the ground here i'm totally on the ground another thing about the fujis is the reticulating screens so I don't have to have my head to the ground. I just need to pull the screen out, and then I can see it. But I love the bouquet of having him, you know, out of focus in the background. And then that's another little more portraity shot of him. Okay. Now finally, we uh, we returned to Havana, and we're in the old part of Havana, old Havana. on the street. And uh, it's just it, it's just amazing. You can see all this kind of stuff. I love this little dawn. Just you know, very comfortably laying there in the middle of the road. Since since people don't have very big places to live, they really are living in the streets. And, you know, Lee and I would say we would get to a corner and we would just stop and observe. And you'd see all of life taking part in front of you. People with babies, old people in wheelchairs, kids going to school, people working on their cars or their pedicabs, the dogs. The, it was just absolutely amazing. So this kind of brings up, there's another question that just came up about, do we have any security issues taking pictures like street photography? No. Well, Cuba is amazingly safe because they're dependent upon the tourist industry. And really, I mean, it's a communist country. So everybody has their subsidies, but if there isn't the tourism, then there's not a lot of money coming in. So they look out for the tourists. They, they don't want to do anything to harm the tourists because that would make tour, tourism go down and they would have less money. So people are all open and friendly and want to talk, and it's also amazingly clean. So here we have the street sweeper. Everywhere you went, it's way cleaner than New York, Los Angeles, Chicago. I mean, any of the major cities we have in the United States, Havana was much cleaner. Um, people, people do take pride. There's rubble, you know, because things are yes. falling apart, but there's no trash on the ground because there's always guys like this running around picking it up. Here's the resulting shot that Bobby was working on. These people are just amazing. Yeah, I am. Um, I what I do is normally when I go to a place is I I stop and observe a little bit, and I also stand around so that people see me. You know, it's like they have a chance to get used to me being there, and I will like I will take pictures of buildings or pretend I'm taking pictures of buildings. So here and, I'm, you know, I'm following Bobby around, and I'm really trying to take a picture of her taking a picture, and this guy right here in the middle is just nailing me with a. <laughs> <laughs> with his with his look, you know, it was it was great. And so, here's, and here's, here's the resulting shots that Bobby did. So this guy was just very talkative. So I have black and white and color. Love the tooth. I just got the tooth thing. So the uh, the food and the water. That's the next question here. The, believe it or not, the food is really bland. Um, we <laughs> we brought a little bottle of. Um, Hot sauce. Hot sauce with us, yeah. and uh, we were you the can't... most popular people on the tour. Oh yeah, you can't drink the water, but there's bottled water everywhere, so that's yeah. all safe. And you know, rum is everywhere, and beer is everywhere, so you know, all of that is all fine. Um, you know, you always people always gave you mojitos for lunch. Uh, you know, you always got drinks. It's like everything was just given. So in in old Havana, walking around, you see all the peeling paint, but people also their street art. So I saw this very odd woman painted. I, I didn't know. And then I just kind of hung out there for a minute and I saw this guy in the red shirt walk up. So I waited for him to come into my corner. But you see here, everything is it's a little bit more subtle. And here's another Bobby approaching somebody who was just hanging out in his doorway and there's the resulting shot. The street life was very rich. The pedicabs, the relationships between the people. I mean, there was always stuff that was going on. Um, you know, here he is working on his pedicab again. Everything takes place in the streets. And, you know, sometimes you just have to wait for it. You just have to wait. You, you stop and you look and you wait for the action to come to you. Um, you know, we're not quite sure what she was doing. <laughs> Some kind of a pump. She's doing something. People are always pretty busy there, even though they're out on the street. And sometimes they're on their cell phones. Oh, yeah. Everybody, pretty much everybody has a cell phone. Um, the weather, it depends upon the time of year. Oh, I love this. This is actually back in the Fuster town. 
um, th these guys just sat there. I mean, obviously, they know I'm taking their photograph. Okay, the question was the weather and what type of clothing should we bring? Um, well, you're probably not going to go during hurricane season. So, you know, most people don't go in August, September. Um, you know, by mid-October, you're probably okay. We were there at the end of October, beginning of November, and the next year's trip, we're going in uh, uh, beginning of November. Um, you know, very it, temperate. It's, yeah, it's very mild. It's it's um, it's it's yeah, warm during the day. Like it was, we mostly had like high 80s. Yeah. And it, if it got down to 70 at night, you know, you really didn't need to wear a jacket. You know, so so here are the uh, the ladies dressed in their colorful. These are the tourist ladies. Nobody tourist dresses ladies. like this. These, yeah. They're there just to get their picture taken right. with tourists. Um, and uh, but everybody else is pretty happy to get their picture taken, and we saw a lot of thumbs up. Oh, you know, yeah. from everybody, uh, very, very happy to have Americans there. There's so much texture and color, and, you know, the people are great. I love this guy's got a Florida hat <laughs> sitting on the stoop. And also, don't forget to look up, because um, there's balconies everywhere. And there's some interesting things happen on those balconies, so definitely worth uh, uh, just looking up from them in street level. So this gentleman engaged me in conversation. He's not behind bars. It's just a, a he, there was a, like a wall with this above it. Um, he taught himself English. I think he said he was like 72. And he taught himself English when he was quite young. And he really just wanted to talk. He wanted to, he wanted to use his English and speak. But he was a very intelligent man. Just, just lovely. I had a great time talking to him. And this couple, this is another thing about waiting. You know, I, I tell my students all the time, it's like you've got to go out and you've got to observe, and then you have to work the shot. So I saw this couple, and I think that they're going into a little chapel. So there's their, you know, their brand new baby. Uh, you know, they were very happy. I must have shot 20 pictures because the wife kept looking everywhere but at me. So he was looking at me, the baby was sound asleep, and I kept like waving my hand and pointing at my lens. And I, when the, this was the very last shot, I finally got her to look at me, and just when she looked at me, the baby woke up too. But I, I shot 20 pictures before I could get her to look at me. So patience. You know, think about selective point of view, uh, or selective focus too. Oh, this was another one that I, I loved. I'm walking down the street, and everybody's doors are open. So you look in, and these, this, this mother and her son we're sitting there and I waved at them and they waved back and so I asked if I could approach and they said yes and I came in and so this is their whole life is right here in this room everything is in here she has dementia and he's taking care of her and we I spent some time with them and I came over and I I thanked them she kissed my hand um, I you know he was very sweet he kissed her I mean it was just it was this really lovely touching wonderful moment just like amazing that these people are so open to say, come into our house, come into our house. And, you know, framed by the doors, lots and lots of great doorways. Okay, this was, uh, we, there's sort of an obligatory trip to a boxing club. And this was a lady at the entryway of the boxing club, <clears throat> which is really kind of a school and they have all these kids. We were there when the kids were having their lessons. Um, these are all Bobby's shots. I, I love this. He's got, you know, the bleachers, there's red and blue, and he's wearing red and he's got the blue gloves. I mean, that was the, the reason for this. And then, then uh, <clears throat> this little boy also is only wearing red stripes. Now, he, this is a boxing pose, but I was just like right tight in on him because of his eyes. So that was all the natural light. But we set up with a couple of flashes. So we've got one on the ground to camera left and another one... Um, on my voice activated light stand, Lee, is over from camera right. So we're kind of like cross lighting them from edges to get edge lights on them. And I managed to get this, he landed that punch on there. And then that's, that's the trainer there. So somebody else asked how many images did you guys take on the trip? Oh God, okay, we, we I haven't even looked at all of I them. I took, <laughs> I think I took about 4,200 in a week, uh, something like that. Oh, so this is, yeah, this is, I love this guy. I just love the colors. I loved him. He was so sweet. So, oh, doorways. You know, I was always looking through doorways to what was on the other side. You know, the colors were just great. Here's, uh, yeah, here's this. <laughs> yeah, I love the, love the haircut. Here's the, the front view. <laughs> but again, people are so friendly. So, you know, as I said, it's like I let people, like, see me and hanging around, and then you hang around for a little while, and they don't look at you anymore. 
So you know you can get to get some moments that that uh, you wouldn't get otherwise. You see lots of shots of, tra of Che everywhere. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, and there's lots of kitties everywhere. Not you know they make good subjects too. Yes. <coughs> Just you know living on the street. I love this. I love the arrow is pointing to the right. The woman's the woman who's wearing the same colors is going to the right. Just like filled with tension. So here we're we're coming up close to um, this area here is is right around the corner from the Capitol building. So there's some grand old buildings, but again you see all the peeling paint. I love that the car matches here, and I think that this is our last shot. So you, I, we this is the kiss. So you see right in the corner there the two people kissing, holding the dog. But this is what the life is. This is what you see. You see all of these amazing the amazing architecture, all of the people. You see all the activity. It's it's overwhelming, and sometimes it's hard to just get down to that, that the tiny little. What do you not show? Because there's so much to show. So, so that's anyway, it. That's uh, this is us. Uh, we have separate websites. We haven't quite gotten it together to put a do a joint website yet, but you can visit both our websites. And we are uh, running a tour to Cuba in November. You see the 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 link here. I think. Uh, 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 X-Rite will be will be putting that out there. so you guys will have the live link and you can check out our websites for our educational what's happening with us with our workshops and um, mentoring we do private mentoring and uh, a variety of classes and I'm going to talk about Lee again he has his own YouTube channel I mentioned that before where there's a lot of free video tutorials so you can check all that out so um, so we got a little bit of time for questions got any more questions here we I, I will have to say that Cuba was so much more than I expected. Um, and I expected a lot because I know a lot of people who've gone, but the people were so open and friendly. It was so safe, loving. It's, it, I, now I understand when I hear people say that they want to go back over and over and over again because we want to go back over and over and over again, and we will. <laughs> we'll be going at least once a year with uh, Yvonne Butler Tours. That's that's who we went with and she's, Yvonne has been to Cuba um, many, many times and is so very well connected and organized. It was a great experience. So um, we hope, yes, somebody wrote, hopefully these folks will prosper in their career fields as the country gets more open. Yes, we hope so too. We hope that we can maintain good relations and that um, uh, these people can lead better lives. It's, they're, you know, in general, very happy people. Educated, happy, and uh, but you know would like to have more in their life. So. Okay, so I see, uh, and, and just another mention that the recording uh, of this will be uh, sent to all the registrants. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. So. And. Uh, and I can go. just uh, come in on the line and, and say thank you to Bobby and Lee for all your time today and sharing all those amazing images. X right certainly appreciates that. And uh, just to reiterate, we will send a link to today's recording out to all of the registrants. So be sure to, uh, to watch out for that email. And again, thanks everyone for joining us, and a special thanks to Bobby and Lee. All right, and thank and you thanks all. to X right We really appreciate <laughs> it. This was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.